Beautiful but fragile Earth. Hello everyone, this is Anton, and today we're going to investigate what happens to our planet if we add a little bit of carbon into our atmosphere. And this is actually a continuation of a previous video where I talked about carbon pools, uh, carbon cycle, and also biomass. Welcome, enjoy the video. <laughs> And so what we're going to do today is pretend that suddenly something happens to our planet, and I guess that by, by that something I mean us, we happen to the planet, and a lot of carbon ends up in the atmosphere instead of being in those um, carbon pools where it's usually stored. Uh, in previous video, I actually kind of gave you an idea how much carbon there is both in atmosphere, in the ocean, and also inside the um, lithosphere, which is of course the rocks and the surface. And to do all of this, what we're going to do is we're using this simulation called climate simulation right here. And uh, this is a pretty accurate representation of what Earth uh, is like and what Earth has in terms of like uh, seasons and climate and so on. You can kind of see uh, snow caps forming and uh, winter and summer sort of changing cycles. But uh, here under climate, there's a really cool greenhouse gas calculator. Uh, it's actually a little bit outdated because from what I've read recently, our carbon dioxide has now reached 400 parts per million, which is actually a relatively high amount, but we're going to keep it as this. And um, I think uh, what, what we're going to do is we're going to change this value right here. This is actually a gigaton of carbon um, in, in the atmosphere. So uh, you, you can actually use a simulation for pretty cool... Um, experiments like for example you can select a scenario for example and then increase your carbon dioxide based on the human um i guess consumption and also human based effects that uh, we usually uh, have on, on our planet uh, you can also change this a little bit you can be, kind of play around with this there's actually really cool different simulations you can use but we're not going to do this uh, this way we're going to do it manually actually and we're going to start by assuming that well let's just say uh, that suddenly we decide to use up all of the fossil fuels and release all of the fossil fuel carbon into our atmosphere. So, uh, in the last video I told you that there's about um, 4.2 gigatons of uh, carbon in fossil fuels. And so what we're going to do here is go into this value and add 4.2 uh, billion, which basically would make it approximately 5,000. So here we go. This is suddenly the planet where all of the fossil fuels have been used up and all of them have been added to the atmosphere. Now, the actual atmospheric pressure will not change very much because it's still not that much carbon. But, as you'll see, um, even though it doesn't show right here, the surface temperature is increasing dramatically. Uh, it was at uh, around 15 degrees on average. Now it's going to increase even more. So I'm going to maybe accelerate this a little bit just so you can see how high it gets. But this is Earth when all of the fossil fuels are now in the atmosphere. And look at Greenland, it's actually finally losing its ice and you can kind of even see the actual island underneath it. This is actually the biggest, the largest island in the world, if you didn't know that. Um, if you don't, I guess, consider Australia, because Australia is usually considered to be a continent, but some people think it's an island. Anyway, so here we go, and it's still increasing. It's already at about 30 degrees, and this is average. So that means that, you know, uh, countries that were hot are going to be even hotter and countries that used to be cold, like, look, let's look at Antarctica, um, have now actually lost a lot of the ice and have now become very habitable. So purchase property in, in Antarctica if you if you think this will happen one day. Or actually, you can technically purchase because, um, yeah, the pr property in, in Antarctica is unpurchasable because according to international law, it doesn't belong to anyone and can never be conquered. That's actually one of the coolest laws there is in existence. Um, anyway, so that's, I think, maybe as high as we'll get after fossil fuels. Let's not end here, though. Imagine something happens and we decide to uh, really screw up our oceans and our water and all of the carbon in the oceans starts getting released as well, like possibly because of the sudden warm-up. Actually, this is what will probably happen because it's suddenly so much warmer, the waters will actually get warmer and all of the carbon in the oceans will start getting released. But let's assume that all of the carbon is actually released. Not just the sum of it, but all of it. And here we're talking about something like 38.4 gigatons. So we're going to add 38.4 to this, making it 43.4 uh, gigatons. Sorry, or 43,400 gigatons. All right, so let's see what happens then. 
And look at the temperature go. Greenland has no ice. Winter is still kind of there, but not for a very long time. Um, countries like Russia has... Even, or even Russia became tropical. Like, this is a country where you'll probably want to leave in the north because everything else up here is going to be scorchingly hot. And uh, only Greenland and possibly Antarctica still have kind of some ice on them. And I th I'm guessing Himalayas too. If I look at Himalayas here. Yeah, there's a little bit of snow in the Himalayas due to the altitude, but that's about it. If you, um, if you live in this world of nightmare and heat, uh, the only snow you'll see is in three regions on Earth. And, alright, so that's not it yet. Oh, and I guess we stopped at around 49-ish degrees Celsius on average. But uh, that's not it. So we've released um, carbon from um, fossil fuels, from the oceans. But as I mentioned in the previous video, there is a lot of carbon in the ground as well, in the lithosphere. And actually, this is very likely what happened to Venus. Uh, we refer to Venus today, and actually, let's take a look at it. Uh, so, Venus is sort of the extreme um, example of greenhouse effect. Uh, we call it a runaway greenhouse effect because something happened on Venus a long time ago, and we don't really exactly know what, but uh, possibly due to uh, volcanic eruptions uh, and something else that went on on this beautiful planet, things just went so dramatically wrong that um, the greenhouse effect here is about 545 degrees Celsius, and all if or I guess most of the carbon from uh, from the carbon reservoirs and here we're talking about carbon pools like inside water if there was any water inside the lithosphere inside rocks uh, has been released into the atmosphere and now it is actually all in the atmosphere making this planet have some of the highest surface pressures here. There's actually 91.3 atmosphere surface pressure here, meaning that, meaning that the atmosphere of Venus is about 92 times more um, pressurized than atmosphere on Earth. Now, it's not exactly how it's going to happen on Earth, so I think Venus originally had a lot more carbon than Earth does, uh, but we can kind of simulate this here as well. So imagine that all of the carbon in the carbon sink inside the rock starts getting released for some reason. Maybe we really screw up the planet and um, suddenly all of the carbon starts kind of getting released. Uh, we have this runaway effect and all of it ends up in the atmosphere just like on Venus. And so what do you think will happen? Well, there's about 75 million gigatons of that stuff in the rock. So this will have to increase by 75 million. And I don't think this actually can even handle this hybrid number because if I enter 75 million, it will just give me this number here, which is much, much lower. So um, it doesn't even have that high of a number. It cannot even simulate it, but we can actually increase this number here because 75 million uh, will also add the surface pressure uh, to our planet. So the surface pressure will actually increase as well. And if I actually add 75 uh, million gigaton to this number, what you'll get is a value of about 8.01, or I guess just, let's just say 8, times 10 to the 19th power kilograms, which will give us, or I guess our planet, the atmospheric pressure of about 17 atmospheres, which is 17 times larger than before. Now, you can imagine what's going to happen here next, because our planet is about to get roasting hot. I'm going to show you, uh, we're going to accelerate this. And just watch how hot it's going to get. Now, obviously, there's no more snow left anywhere. Greenland is out of snow. Uh, Himalayas are also scorchingly hot. Uh, oh, wait a second. There's a little bit of a snow left right here in the Antarctic region. Right on the South Pole, actually. But it will not be there for a very long time. So, basically, this is a planet or you're about to see the planet, um, of extreme greenhouse effect. So imagine if all of the carbon in the sinks, in, uh, all, in, in the entire region on our planet, gets released into the atmosphere, just like it did on Venus. And um, actually, one day, we, we would like to find out what exactly happened to Venus so it doesn't actually happen to our planet Earth, because what happened to Venus is an absolute extreme. And you're about to see what happens here as well, if one day Earth experiences this very catastrophic events and look at the color change what used to be green i think is slowly turning brown now the average temperature is almost 80 degrees celsius here i was trying to find some snow anywhere and oh look at that 
Indonesia has now become a very, very large country because essentially, or I guess that's also Malaysia and Indonesia, because essentially um, where there used to be water, uh, there's actually no water anymore. And so now we just have these like ground passages everywhere. And Australia has joined Papua New Guinea and even New Zealand has grew in size because water has actually receded. Um, so most of the water will actually also join the atmosphere and increase the pr surface pressure even um, further. Um, and Antarctica has now become an actual continent uh, with no snow, of course. But this is probably the only place on Earth where we can kind of survive still because the temperature here will not be as high as everywhere else. And we can possibly also live in the mountains, I guess, in the mountainous regions on Earth because that's where the temperature will still be kind of um, hospitable, but everywhere else on Earth, so, you know, uh, forests of Russia or Greenland or uh, North America, especially hot countries like Venezuela, are very likely to be scorchingly hot. We're talking about um, close to the boiling temperature of water, and this is why so much water has actually evaporated, because in many regions on Earth, the water will actually be at 100 degrees Celsius. Now, I don't know if it's going to go higher or not. It possibly will, but um, as of now, the simulation is not actually perfect, but um, I have a feeling that it might actually go even higher than that. In, in real life, if we release all of the carbon, into the atmosphere, it will most likely reach the point of boiling water for sure. But in this game, this is as hot as it gets, and I think this kind of gives you an idea that uh, releasing carbon into the atmosphere is probably one of the stupidest things we can do as human beings. We need to definitely watch carbon intake and uh, outtake, and obviously try to uh, limit it as well, because if we increase carbon to the point where our planet becomes inhospitable, well, we don't really have much choice here. We don't really have anywhere else to go, so yeah, there you have it. And this is actually, this is quite kind of cool. These used to be um, lakes in Canada, and uh, in the US uh, and now they're all gone there's just like a little bit of water left on the bottom here so that's kind of cool it's kind of interesting to see a different face of earth if there was actually uh, a lot less water on the surface of it so uh, it's a pretty interesting but kind of a scary image now anyway so that's all i wanted to show you in this particular video and hopefully you learned something from it and if you've enjoyed this video and if you actually learned something don't forget to share this with your friends show this to your teachers or possibly someone who you think may enjoy this video and don't forget to like it as well now in the next video we're going to explore something else possibly something related to this simulation as well so stay tuned and you'll find out what is coming next. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for all of your support, including those of you who support me on Patreon. I love you so much. Game you later. Bye-bye. And I'm gonna make this planet even roastier than before. Let's increase the surface pressure. Haha! -ha. Let's make it close to the surface pressure of Venus. Well, that's a different face of Earth altogether. It looks like most of the water has actually evaporated. Yeah, that is a scary looking place. Look at that, there's actually a completely new island here in, in the middle of Atlantic Ocean. That is beautiful though. Some of these parts, ooh, look at that. There's all these islands that have, have been created by the extreme case of what seems to be a greenhouse effect.